Chad, we're not discussing a Ravens win, and we're not discussing Lamar Jackson proving to everyone that he's worth the fully guaranteed money that he sought this past offseason, and he goes into another year where he could potentially be franchised, he could be released, he could be traded. All different things are on the table for the Ravens as they try to de- to figure out where they're going to go to next. Yeah, you know, we just played some footage from Fox where Sean Payton is saying he's not going to be a part of the Ravens next year. He doesn't believe in talking to people around that team. And then you got Mike Vick saying, put a brace on it and go play. Um, this all comes after, too. Sammy Watkins had a very long answer uh, to a reporter this weekend about Lamar Jackson, where he's basically almost begging him to come play. You know, saying, hey, we're all out here. There's guys banged up. We'd love for our leader to be here. I think we win this game if you give it a go, but also kind of hedging by saying, I don't know how hurt he is, so if he's not going to play, I guess he's hurt. Um, This sort of weird dance around it with could he have given it a go if he really wanted to? Is this just a business move from Lamar Jackson? I started by saying I think it's refreshing that these guys on Fox said it, what a lot of people won't. It is difficult to speculate on injury, but you do have Mike Vick saying, I played an entire season with a sprained MCL. Now, I don't know, what is it, PCL injury with Lamar Jackson versus MCL injury. Everybody's pain threshold is different, this and that. I understand it. Um, I kind of lean into the, I think he's making a business decision. I think he could have rushed back. It's both. But no no one's jumping to bash him on Friday or on Thursday when he sent out the tweet is that he didn't go to the game. That's what, uh, that's what brought on this attention. Yeah. That- now the tweet thing, I think Sean Payton's being very, very old school when he says that I, I'm, I'm with you on that. If, if I'm in a situation where if I feel like I'm legitimately hurt and I feel like my organization isn't protecting me by releasing information and allowing a lot of speculation to go on about me dogging it in some which, way. Which was that he could be back within three weeks. Yeah, then I, I don't blame him for wanting to come out and say, no, this is what's going on. Here's what the rehab's been. You know, if you want to lay all that out there, I can't fault a guy for wanting to set the record straight and to put information out there when everyone else refuses to do it. I also think, sort of like the Kyler Murray situation, there's enough... There's enough I've heard from people around the Ravens, Sammy Watkins being one of them, that leads me to believe that if Lamar Jackson really wanted to play in this game, he could have played. Now, we can get into the nuance of, well, what's going on in the negotiation before the season? What's he being told by his agent? What's really best for Lamar Jackson long term? All of those things. I have a tendency to default to, you're in the playoffs. Right. It's a team sport still. If you got a chance to win a playoff game and make a run in the playoffs, you do everything you possibly can to play. I don't know if he's done that or not, but if there's any doubt that he could have played and he didn't, that's a bad look for Lamar Jackson, and I don't like it. And if I'm the Ravens and they feel that way, I don't like it if I'm the Ravens. I mean, he's ultimately clearly going to do what's best for him long term, and he wants to get that big contract, and he's going to get it from someone. Yes. But I would understand his teammates having a hard time with that. Well, I can do, understand what Mike Vick is saying with it also. Some do, some don't. Is Dobbins and, and you've got uh, Marcus Peters who say, number one, if he plays, we're winning the game. I mean, that's after Huntley did everything possible to keep them in the, the playoff hunt and played with a shoulder issue and a wrist issue last night. Their, court, their starting quarterback last night, Tyler Huntley, was thrown under the bus by the starting running back who said, yeah, if Lamar plays, we win. And he's, he's right. He's, he's not right. wrong. But, I mean, he's being just as vocal on that end. There, there is and, – and, by the way, he traveled all season. He was in Cincinnati last week. So something went down to where, you know, he felt like he was going to be the scapegoat if they fell again in the postseason. They haven't won a postseason game since 2015. They've outgained their last four playoff opponents by 120 yards, including last night. And they're one in three in their last four postseason games. That win was here in Nashville against the Tennessee Titans by starting quarterback Lamar Jackson. I, I, I think he views it as, a, of course, a, a negotiation slash money issue. But also, I mean, the guy's got to be healthy in order to do that. And if he feels like he's being told he's got to play and he's healthier than what he's being told based on second opinion... And oh, by the way, he represents himself. He cut off the negotiations on his own prior to the start of the season. 
uh, what he wants is to get a franchise tag at worst. And at best, he gets a contract either in Baltimore or somewhere else this offseason. So he's getting upwards of 45 to 50 million next year, regardless of where he plays, as long as he's healthy. So yeah, it's a business move, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's lying about it when he was very detailed in what he put out on Twitter. Yeah. And, and guess, guess who's not answering questions? The Baltimore Ravens. John Harbaugh's not answer, answering anything in regards to the injury. So speak up if he's lying. Well, here's what's going to happen now, and it's going to piss a lot of people off, and I get it. There's going to be a lot of anonymous reporting about it. There's going to be Ravens sure. coaches, general manager, uh, players. They're going to speak off the, on the record but anonymously, and they're going to question Lamar Jackson's heart. They're going to question Lamar Jackson's pain threshold. They're going to poke a lot of holes in him late in the season, uh, and that's what's going to go on now. And Lamar can continue to tweet out his side of whatever's going on. I'll say this, too. He didn't do a lot of goodwill for himself by not traveling with the team and being there on the sideline to support them in this game. Perception is going to be, quite frankly, and maybe rightfully so, that he did a very selfish thing in, in doing what he did. And not going all of a sudden, I don't care if you're in a riff with, the, or with management or whoever, it's a bad look. He should have been there. On the side, I'm not saying that he had to play. If he's physically not able to play or he feels that way, don't play. But it's weird that he wasn't there. And maybe something awful happened from the organization towards him that led to this, and maybe that all comes out in the wash one day. But I do think it was bad that he wasn't there for his teammates. Yeah, and all the detail that Harbaugh has given was whenever they asked you know, when he would be back originally. He said days to weeks was uh, the detail of that. And then that's kind of the, the barometer of the, okay, he's going to be back at practice. Is he going to be back on the game? Well, you start judging that based on what the Ravens were putting out. And for the first time, we heard from Lamar Jackson on what he felt he was dealing with. We still don't know why he didn't go. Uh, when he was traveling last week, everyone's pointing to a contract dispute. But, I mean, it's not like he was playing either way. So if he goes, he still sits out. And really no one's talking about it because he just – chose to travel, not that he sat out and said he had a, 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 a further issue with the same need that the Ravens were apparently saying was not as big of an issue as he was making it out to be. Yeah, and in the end... And here we go. Here we go again with this. The, in the end, the, the one thing that cost the Ravens the game is the one play that Lamar Jackson probably doesn't make, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm saying, and I, I've given Huntley yeah. credit here. He had them in position to pull off a win over the defending AFC champs on the road, and they're about to punch it in from a yard out. And yeah. he does something stupid, and it's a play that Lamar Jackson probably doesn't have happen to him, and the Ravens go in there and win the game. Chris Greer says Tua is their quarterback. I, I found it really interesting uh, with all of the news and notes, and you mentioned anonymous sourcing, uh, immediately in what could be Brady's final game in Tampa tonight. Um, the, the next teams that are on a list, a very short list of teams that are, would be interested in pursuing him. And the Dolphins were not listed. After last season, with all the speed we just saw, heard from Sean Payton, all of the speculation that they were going to team up and go to Miami, today, Chris Greer comes out and says, two is the, our quarterback. They're going to keep the options open about the fifth-year option, which is a possibility, about a contract extension, uh, tag, all of it. And he's coming off of two confirmed NFL concussions. But, I mean, we saw him have three. And they shut him down for the end of the season, didn't travel to Buffalo because you've got to be cleared through concussion protocol to do it. And speaking with doctors, Greer says, oh, wait, we're moving forward with Tua. They say he's going to be 100% next season. I wonder if they're at all worried about, um, with all the talk about concussions and the NFL and protecting quarterbacks and everything, and the fact that they're involved in this other lawsuit that's separate of that, I wonder if there's any thinking about, well, we're just going to look terrible if we just get rid of this guy and move forward because he's had these terrible concussions. Well, I mean, and we can't trust his injury history well, now. Or just because it's, uh, it's, I mean, teams will cut a player as soon as he's, you know, physically able to pass a physical, even coming All off the a concussion. Time. So yeah. I don't know if that's, I, I wouldn't perceive it that way. No, but I'm saying that you know there's going to be people that perceive it as, boy, they threw this guy out to the Wolves and they didn't do what's right by him. The league didn't when I he mean, had the one concussion that wasn't called. And the moment he passed the physical, they cut him. 
I mean, someone's gonna gonna argue that you got to do what's best for your organization within the rules. I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing for them to do that right. because of optics, but I, I, Hutton, it's such a weird decision to me well, it's just to unknown. just blanket say, well, he's the guy when you have this history that I don't know why they would do it. Well, they, they don't they have bu- a great secondary option right now. Unless it's go big for someone that's out there and, and possibly available. Well, they know how good they were when he was healthy and what he did within that passing game. So, I mean, it's just so it, – it, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to bring Bra- uh, Bridgewater. You know, Thompson, what, started, what, four games this year total, counting yesterday in Buffalo? It is a – it's tricky because they're close. They're really close. But you can't count on Tua now because of every – they they say that you know one concussion leads to your next one, and with the track record now and the protocols that are in place, I mean there's no way you can go in with just him believing Chris Greer. I'm saying believing that two is the guy and he's your your 18 week starter. You have to prepare better than what they did this year, and they tried to with Bridgewater, but they did that because they weren't sold on Tua, not because of an injury history. So many drops yesterday. Talking about Skylar yeah. Thompson, did not do him any favors. That receiving core that's been really good this year with some key drops, starting with the first drive of the game on a deep ball. Uh, they, they needed those receivers to be great, and they were not. Giants came up with the big plays late to beat Minnesota. I don't think anyone's shocked by this, but there are the, the, people are pointing to this as the biggest upset of the weekend. And, you know, the Giants going on the road and winning against a 13-win team. Okay. And doing it with Daniel Jones, the forgotten prove-it quarterback of 2022-23. And doing it with Saquon Barkley, who's out to prove a point, too, to get the money and prove that he's worth it. I, it, Brian Dayball has done an incredible job. Because I think the common, average football fan, can they name six players on the Giants roster today? Probably not. That's crazy considering they're one of the eight teams remaining in the league. So, by seeding, it was the biggest upset right. of the week. Uh, the biggest upset of the week is the Jags falling behind 27 nothing, and coming back, even as an under... They were a home underdog in the game uh, on Saturday night. That That's the biggest upset. He's the, he's the coach of the year. I mean, when, when you look at him. Now, here's what I want to talk about. What the hell is Kirk Cousins doing on fourth and eighth? I mean, that was not even a let's and throw a screen and have guys set up where you can run and get it. How are they not trying to get that to Jefferson? Too? I have no idea what the thought – did he think it was third down? He said he didn't like the look he had for Jefferson, so he checked it. I, I, it, I, it was Kirk Cousins being Kirk Cousins. One and four in the postseason. Ooh, that was bad. All, all year, the Vikings, even 33 to nothing, all the talk against the Colts. Here's the Vikings. Yeah. Here's Kirk Cousins. Not that good. They're going to disappoint. And every time they answered the bell, they had big win after big win. Kirk Cousins put up huge numbers. Justin Jefferson is the best receiver in football. Here they come again with another comeback. And then to get to this point and have the ball with a chance to go down and do something with it late. On fourth and eight, you throw two, three <sighs> yards with a guy clearly there to tackle him? Nowhere to go. I mean, it's if, if you see a guy wide open with room to run in front of him is one thing. Just an odd decision by a veteran guy that I, I – the only thing I could think is, did he in the moment just black out mentally and think it's third down and not fourth down? Did he forget the down and distant situation? That's even worse, though. On that play. And he's not going to admit it now. But in the moment, he just saw a guy open and, and threw it and wasn't thinking about what the down was. It, it's bad either way. Bengals win the rematch. Giants upset the Vikings. Bills hold on after the Dolphins rally. And the 49ers beat the Seahawks. Uh, Seattle's up 17-16 at halftime. And then Brock Purdy and the offense, with so many different weapons and how we go about beating a team on top of that defense. Chad, I think they're going to, or we're going to see them in Glendale, San Fran. I think Purdy's about to take over the entire topic line of Sports Talk Radio. Preseason, I had Bills versus Packers in the Super Bowl. Right before the playoffs started, I changed that to Bills versus 49ers. After this weekend's game, I'm feeling even better Mm. about that with the 49ers because this is not – Brock Purdy is still going to go on more of a run. This run has been taking place, though. This is not the start. He's he's mid-run 
this season, and it's the start of something even bigger, I think, with him and the 49ers. This is no fluke anymore He's seven with his oh. play. Yeah, he's 7-0. Oh. He has that first playoff win under his belt, and the team is 11-0 right now as they go into the divisional round.